it's Jen from Fabulous Paper Emporium. Welcome to part two of our album with waterfalls, or I can't even remember what I called it. Waterfalls album? I'm not entirely sure. Um, if you've missed part one, we have created, let me bring this in, we have created the outside of our album. So hinges, hinges all done, and the outside. This is uh, the lay flat method, if you will. Um, so maybe slightly different than what you've been accustomed to. I think this is the second one that I've done uh, as a lay flat. I really do kind of like it. I feel like in a lot of ways it's actually easier um, than, than, you know, covering one or three pieces, making sure that they're all on the right side or right space and all the rest of that stuff. So um, anyway, so yes, yeah, so part one was going through to create to that point, to the hinge. I will give you a little bit of a sneak peek if you missed uh, part one. So again, this is an album just with waterfalls. So, and different types of waterfalls. So this one is a stacked waterfall where we have a strap with a magnet. And why it's stacked is there are actually four pieces, they're different sizes, all scored at the exact same measurement and thus creating this beautiful waterfall. That I saw, I believe um, the, the channel's called uh, Creative Operations. Um, Michelle is the one who uh, does all the tutorials or, or who has that channel and I saw this on that channel and it has changed the way I do waterfalls. Instead of cutting all those pieces, all the score marks, this is probably one of the easiest ways of doing it. I did a little pocket at the bottom. We are using the no pun intended paper, or at least I am. This is the, what I'm calling the reverse waterfall. So you've got this one that's open basically already, this one that's closed, and that's how that works. Um, so we're going to try and get through, because we need to do our signatures today, and I think I'm going to do this stacked. We'll see kind of how time is going, um, and then I'll get through as, as many. I, my plan is to get through all the waterfalls this weekend. So today is Saturday. Hopefully we are able to keep with that um, schedule, that plan. <laughs> this one I call like the pull tab. This one I saw on Country Craft Creations. And again, super, super easy to put together. And then the last one is maybe, I don't know if it is technically a waterfall, around the world waterfall, let's call it. And this one I had just put together with two little uh, Velcro strips and this opens around the world. So we've got pages that flip out all over the place and so yeah so that is it so I have four more pages that need to be covered because each one of these waterfall styles is going to then I've done four I'm going to repeat and do the same four on the next four pages okay so getting to the signatures so the signatures are basically the pages and so uh, to create this, each one of, and I haven't done this yet, but I'll bring this back in. Each one actually is like a pocket. So you could put something on the inside. Uh, I've never had a pocket quite this large. So I feel like if I do use the pockets, which I probably will, because that's, let's face it, that's extra real estate that I don't feel should go to waste. I will probably use 110 pound. All of the rest of the cardstock that I've used um, today and in the previous has all been 65 pound, which is unusual. Usually my signatures I usually make with a with a slightly heavier cardstock, but I feel with all the layers we're going to be fine. It's not like these are going to be really flopping all over the place. 
There's a ton of layers. There's our solid cardstock, which is going to be kind of the base um, uh, on top of the black. And then we also have obviously our waterfall. So I feel like we'll be totally fine as far as durability and rigidity. <laughs> so with the signatures, you are going to need four pieces that are, let me just take that paper clip off. These ones, I've got four pieces, eight and a quarter by 10 and a half. And then we have four pieces that are going to be an inch wider. So these ones are nine and a quarter by 10 and a half. These ones we're going to be scoring. So to score these, you're going to put the nine and a quarter at the top and we are going to score at eight and three quarters. So we're going to do a half inch tab on either side. Now, if you know me, you know, I don't like scoring at a half inch on the left hand side. I just simply cannot do it. So I'm going to flip mine around and do eight and three quarters twice. And this way you have two little tabs on either side. So I'm going to continue doing that with all four of my pieces. The signatures, while the album is basically put together differently than, I don't know, maybe your traditional album, like the lay flat is kind of new to me. So um, that's why I say like traditional, where you have all your chipboard laid out and you have a super long piece of cardstock and you're laying uh, your chipboard you know, it's kind of got to be an eighth of an inch in between and, you know, all the rest of that business. <laughs> um, and I've done those too. And they're, they're cute. They're perfectly, they're perfectly fine. I love them. Um, but the, I don't know, I feel like the lay flat are just, it's just, it's a simpler way of putting together an album in, in my very, very humble opinion. So I'm done with my four pieces. And so we are going to need to burnish these. So where on earth? Ah, it's on the left hand side. That's weird. Never not a lefty so weird that that would be on the left hand side okay all right so you're basically going to fold these inwards so now you have two little tabs that are folded inside and how we're going to create the signature is we're now we would i got to put the score tape on there but basically your eight and a quarter by ten and a half lays right on top of that thus creating the pocket on one side and the space for your hinge to go on the other side. So quite easy. This isn't any different than what you're in. You know, like I was saying, the traditional way of putting together your album. And for some reason, Oh, no, nope, that's three eighths or no. Yeah, that's three eighths. Okay. Just want to make sure that I'm going as close to side to side in terms of, you know, the top and bottom without going over. Of course, black on black is not helping, not helping the situation there. And then we are going to do on this side as well. I'm running low. I don't think I'm going to be able to make it through all four pieces. Okay, but I'm going to go through one, at least one with you and show you my method of how I put this together. So with my score tape down, I am going to peel back just a little tab on either side, like so. And then I'm going to grab my piece that's eight and a quarter by ten and a half. I like to just kind of tap it down so that the placement is where I want it. My hands are guiding it on the left and the right side. And then at the top, 
once I get my fingers to the top, then I can just push down ever so slightly. No, that's not where I want it. You should, mm, of course, now I say you should be able to peel it back. But I think I was too forceful there. I may have to go with that. Let's see. No, nope, 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 nope. Aha. Okay, <clears throat> let's try this again. Now, the other option we have as well, that is st still really sticky, is to put your liquid glue down. If you, if you want to put liquid glue down, that of course gives you a little bit of play, you know, a little bit of play in the uh, positioning. So let's see if I can get this. Perfect. Okay, I really like that positioning. So I've got both tops tacked down. I'm going to start with the right side. And as I pull, I'm just going to press and keep that all aligned. And then I'm just going to do the same thing on the left side. And there we have our signature. So our hole. <laughs> so that's how the, the the page or the signature is going to be installed. The hinge is going to go on the inside and then we'll have this space if we want to put a um, insert into the pocket. You don't have to, um, but like I said, adds a whole lot more real estate. Like you'll ha basically have a page, not quite eight and a quarter by ten and a half. I would probably say about eight and an eighth just need a little bit of of space obviously to get it in and out um, and then ten and a half that probably would be adjusted as well I like usually when I'm doing um, pockets bear with me one second <clears throat> I just so happen to have and if you missed this, we did have a Craftsmas in July, and this was the other Lay Flat album that I made. It's the Cabin cabin album. And um, so this topper, so it would obviously stand up, and it does stand up like that. So this is actually where the top, your album is. So as I pull this open, there isn't a lot of, of space at the top, but um, because I was really, really close to the top, to the, to the edge of the album, but usually there's a little bit more space. Um, and I did these little quarter round tabs at the back, but if you're interested in this, it's part of our video collection. Or if you look at the playlist Craftsmas in July, um, that was our final project and also uses a lay flat method. So I would, I would definitely go check it out because it's pretty cool. <laughs> okay. So getting back to the signatures, it is as simple as that. So we'll do one more. Don't need the sticky telling me that this is a signature any longer. So I am going to burnish my score lines. You do want to make sure that those are burnished nice and well. Then I'm going to grab one of my eight and a quarter by ten and a half pieces. Well, a little bit jump into the gun a little bit there because first we need to apply our score tape because how else are they going to be adhered? Magic? think not. All right. <laughs> so I am at the end of that roll. And since we just got some more into the store, uh, I have so thoughtfully left that downstairs. Okay. All right. I am going to do a quarter inch and you guessed it, an eighth of an inch. It's just for this one little one. I'll have to run down and get 
another roll. Okay, so we've got all of our um, score tape down. I'm going to peel this back a tiny bit on either side. Grab my piece. Now you could also use the top of your scoreboard or the side or the edge. Um, I like taking the mat off just so that I have a little bit more of a lip. So the alternative way of doing this, if you are not comfortable holding it in your hands because, you know, things tend to slide and slip and all the rest of that stuff, you could do this easily on your score pal if you happen to have one. And then all I would do then is now that you've got it tacked on the top and the bottom, grab your first tab, get rid of that one. I know my second one is going to be a little bit challenging. I just got to peel this back and get rid of the quarter inch and the one eighth inch. Come on there and just lay that down. So now we have our second signature. Okay. So I will get doing the rest of my signatures and I will be right back. Okay. So I just realized that I had not restarted my recording. So thankfully I've got two signatures in already. <laughs> Thankfully, I have left my other two. Oh my gosh. So I don't know how long, um, I don't know how long I've been talking to myself, but I'm very thankful that I actually caught that because I'm playing the near far game with my camera and standing up so I get a better vantage point of pulling, putting on the signatures. So signatures, you can decorate them before they go into the album. I would be very careful with that though, because you do have to make sure that the pockets, the, 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 the open ends are always on the left and the right. The only exception to that would be like for the cabin album, <laughs> because the orientation is different, but that's the total exception to the rule. And so for uh, the adding the signatures on, I have peeled back the score tape. Now, one thing I did want, I did want to mention is that remember the score tape does not go all the way to the bottom. We have only put this to the upper part of the hinge. And the reason for that is we don't want our signatures to go all the way to the bottom either because it's not going to allow the page to move freely and the bottoms of your, your signatures are going to start to curl. So, you want to make sure that when you're putting this in, so A, the hinge is going to fit on there really nicely, or I should say the signature is going to fit on there really nicely. The hinge is about eight inches and our signatures are eight and a quarter. So that gives us about, um, you know, should give us, well, about a quarter of an inch of play. So an eighth of an inch at the top and the bottom. So all I do is I kind of, move this around to where I like it and I'm trying to get make sure so that the signatures are all in line and I am also leaving myself some space at the top and at the bottom so when I like it again the same thing as with my signature I'm just going to press down at the top where I've revealed the tape i'm pulling back on the adhesive the backing and then i just press down and then i can come to the back pull this one and press down as well and then your signature is added so i'm going to do that one more time and that will be the last signature for this album so just peel back sorry i had to make sure that the the hinges are still pretty tight as far as, you know, being new to the album, they haven't been really used much. So, okay. All 
righty. Okay. So I'm just going to fold this to make sure that I'm kind of in line with the rest of my signatures. Well, oh, that has grabbed. Whoopsie. I don't want to pull that out. No, oh, thank you. All right. So I'm going to pull my adhesive backing off, flip, and then pull this one. Excellent. And that is installing your signatures. So now we have all of our signatures added. Um, and now is kind of where the fun part begins, I guess, uh, because now we can start cutting decorative paper, colored paper, all kinds of things. So if I bring back my original one really quickly, I decided because I did not want to put um, a page of decorative paper only to have my waterfall cover it, I cut colors that I thought were, would be complementary. Um, so yellow, turquoise, a, like a lime green, and a pink to do kind of like a base for each one of these pages. And so if you are wanting to do that, you're going to need to cut a colored piece that is 10 and a quarter by eight, and then uh, adhere them down before we start putting on our waterfalls. So just something to keep in mind. Since I've already gone ahead and done that for my album, we are going to start first with the stacked waterfall and the pocket. Okay, so now I've got all my stuff ready to go. Okay, for the stacked waterfall, we are and surprise pocket. <laughs> we are going to need pieces that are the following. So we are going to need, um, peel that off. So you need one piece that is seven and three quarters by nine. We need a piece that is 10, sorry, seven and three quarters by 10. One that's seven and three quarters by 11. And then seven and three quarters by 12. So this is going to create, these four pages are going to create our waterfall, our stacked waterfall. We need one piece that is seven and three quarters by one and a half. This is for our strap. We'll be scoring all of these. And then this is our pocket and this is cut at eight and three quarters by four and a quarter. And we're going to be scoring this at a half inch on three sides. So the two short side and one of the long sides. So we're going to have to bring out our score pal and get to scoring. So the four pieces that we, um, that I mentioned right from the beginning, nine, all of these are seven and three quarters. So the nine, 10, 11, and 12. So we are gonna put long side at the top for each one. And we are gonna score at four and a quarter. We are gonna rotate 180 degrees and score at four and a quarter. Okay, so for your short piece, which is the nine by seven and three quarter, we just basically have a half inch gap right in the middle. We set that aside. Now grab your 10 inch. This is the beauty about this album, this waterfall, is you cut your measurements, so you figure out what the width is or the height, and that's going to be consistent amongst all of the pieces. And then each piece is going to be an inch smaller than the previous. And your scoring is always four and a quarter, rotate it 180, and at four and a quarter. And now for this, for this, um, the second piece, that is going to be an inch and a half now set that aside. Now we bring in our piece that is 11 by seven and three quarters. Again, scoring at four and a quarter, rotate, score at four and a quarter. And now we have a gap that is two and a half inches. 
And then our last piece is going to be the, the seven and three quarter by 12. So 12 at the top, four and a quarter, rotate, and we're scoring at four and a quarter. And then that one would be, I think, three and a half. One, two, three and a half. Okay, so we've got all four of our sheets. Oh, since we're at it, we might as well score our other pieces. So for the pocket, so this is the one that's eight and three quarters by four and a quarter. We're going to do a half inch at either side. So I'm just going to score at eight and a quarter, turn it 180 degrees, go eight and a quarter again. And then on one long side, I'm scoring at three and three quarters. And then that will be our pocket. And then the little strip that we're gonna be using as the strap to hold the waterfall, this one is seven and three quarters long. So at the seven and three quarter, at, at the top, Pete's side at the top, we're gonna to just score this at seven and one quarter. Now all of our scoring is done. I'm just gonna bring in my score mat so I can work. We're just gonna go ahead and burnish all of our score marks. So we've got our strap and then we'll have our pocket. On the pocket, we are going to have to do a little bit of cutting, but we'll get to that when the time comes. Okay, so pocket on the side. And now we're going to burnish all of our folds for our waterfall. We're keeping everything nice and aligned at the top and at the bottom, making sure it all looks good. Okay, so now that we are done with all of our burnishing, we are gonna have to take the each one of these pieces and in this on the back side of this middle panel, so we've got our two score marks, so this is gonna be the middle panel. On the back side of that, we are going to apply our score tape. And this is what's going to adhere everything together. So, uh, which is why I like using the score tape instead of liquid glue. A liquid glue, a good liquid glue, I'm sure would work equally as well. So it's entirely your choice on what you would like to use. But like I said, I am just going to use some of my score tape. So all of our pages are done. We are going to start by taking the two smallest pieces. Um, no, you know what? We're going to stack on top of the large one. I think that's how I did it. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to take my a large piece. So this is the one that is 12 by seven and three quarters, 12 inches across the top. And then if you have any kind of, um, if it's a self healing, you know, score mat, um, or this score, the score mat, <laughs> I meant the cutting mat. Um, if you have something with a grid that works amazingly well, if you don't take out your ruler and give yourself a guide. So you're going to want to mark off on the 
bottom and perhaps give yourself a little mark at the top. You're going to want to mark from the, each score line, you're going to do a half inch in, and that's going to be where you're aiming to put the one that's going to go on top. So I am just going to use my grid here as well as the marks at the very top to kind of be my guide. And so to do this, I am going to peel off all of the adhesive backing and I'm going to apply some liquid glue just to give me a bit of, oh, there. you know, give me a bit of wiggle room because this does need to be pretty precise. So I am aiming for on this side for four and three quarters. And putting it in my score pal allows me to make sure that both the top and the bottom are aligned. And that is also the other thing that you're wanting to make sure of. And now I'm just going to take my bone folder, make sure that that is really well adhered in the middle and that either end is burnished. Okay. And then we're going to repeat that with our next layer. So now this is the one that's 10 by seven and three quarters, peeling off the backing applying our glue oh. I've got some glue on the front I don't know how that happened that was weird that was weird okay so now I'm aiming for five and a quarter on this side five and a quarter. That is a messy five and a quarter. Okay. I do want to grab maybe a little bit of paper towel before I start pressing down because I can already see it oozing. Okay. And then make sure that that's all aligned. I'm going to grab my bone folder and flip that and flip this. Okay. And then we have our very last piece that is the nine, seven and three quarters by nine. Okay. And then this one that was five and a quarter, so now I'm going for five and three quarters, which is, oops, oh my goodness. Make sure I'm going straight here. I'm not going off the rails and press down. More glue. <laughs> glue alert. Press that down, make sure that's well adhered in the middle, and then I'm just going to fold that. And so once you fold everything, you now have your waterfall. Like, how simple is that? And you just need to adhere this into our book. So in order to do so, we are also going to need to complete our pocket. So setting the waterfall off to the side, I still haven't gone downstairs to grab my other tape. So with the pocket, so at each corner, we now have a little square. So that is the 
area where we've done our scores. And so very similarly to how we cut off the bulk when we're wrapping our chipboard, we are gonna come right to that point and cut off. And we're gonna do that to both squares. I come right to the point and then cut away. And that eliminates the bulk so that we have a really nice point and it's not too bulky at the back, you know, causing the pocket to kind of sit upwards. And then on with the face upwards, we are going to apply some score tape to all uh, three tabs that we've created. And then this will be ready to install. Okay, I'm going to bring in my album. So my album went something like, okay, I've got my colored cardstock down. Not a big deal. If you don't feel like using colored cardstock, you don't have to. The, uh, the waterfall is going to sit, how did I have that? I had that on the outside. Yeah, that's how that's going to go. I'm going to have the, uh, the waterfall sit closer to the left-hand side, giving myself about a quarter inch space on the left-hand side. So I'm going to see a bit about a quarter of an inch of the colored cardstock. And then the pocket wherever that might be. Once we put in our waterfall, I'm going to do my best to align the pocket with the, with the waterfall. I just realized that some of these pages are a little bit crooked. You usually do that standing up, but okay. Anyways, um, I'm going to peel all of my adhesive backing. I realize I went a little bit crazy on the adhesive backing. You don't need, or sorry, the dub, the, the score tape. Uh, you really don't need this much on, on this piece, honest to God. <laughs> Probably three pieces would have been enough, but I was obviously not paying attention, figuring maybe I was in album mode. I don't know. But anywho... <laughs> Okay, and so I am going to align this on this left-hand side. Okay, that's going to be nice and adhered. You can press down in the middle of each one of these. That will give you a spot to make sure all that glue and tape is nicely adhered. I'm gonna flip that back for a moment. I'm going to also need to put in our strap at the same time. So that is gonna go underneath the long tab of the pocket. So when I pull back my tabs, I'm gonna do this pretty much the same as like, I'm just going to start all of my tabs. I'm not going to pull them just yet because I want to try to get this pocket in as level to the um, waterfall as I possibly can. So, and I'm just realizing, because I made a boo-boo the first time, I almost didn't put in that little tab thing. What I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to pull this bottom one off completely, and I'm, I'm eyeballing it. So this is going to go in, oh, come on, roughly in the middle of the pocket. And then on the back side, so where I'm now covering, I'm just gonna add some liquid glue right here. I'm gonna add a little bit of liquid glue so I have some 
you know, some play time, play room, play room to play. <laughs> so I'm going to sit that just underneath the bottom one and then place it down. I realize my little tab, this little strappy thing, and then I can pull my two little tabs at either side. So those are all down. Realize that this is not at all in the middle, but that's fine. It's close enough, close enough. And then the last thing that I'm going to do so that I do not forget, if you are adding a magnet, grab two of your magnets now before you go anywhere, before you do anything. Um, you know what? That was the other thing I forgot. I rounded the corners and I totally forgot to round the corners. So I'm going to grab my magnet. I'm going to apply it to my strap because that is kind of what is going to dictate where the magnets go, really. So I'm just going to grab some quarter inch score tape. I'm applying this to both sides of the magnet. like so. Pull one side of the adhesive backing off and I'm going to, so the adhesive backing is face up and so I'm going to just press that down. So now both magnets are on my strap and now I can pull back the adhesive backing on the other side of the magnet and then press down. So now you have your magnets on both sides. Just as simple as that. If you wish to use the Velcro little circles, which I've used on, the, on this one, on the Around the World, absolutely but then you don't have to obviously don't do it now because you're going to cover it with decorative paper do it when everything is done and then um i like them because they are clear they're pretty you know invisible when when the um you know when you're looking at that page you really they don't stand out so if you get the clear ones you should be totally fine so I am going to uh, simply round my corners, which I had totally forgotten I had done on these ones. <laughs> so all I'm going to do now that it's installed, it really isn't a big, big deal. I think I used my a quarter, a quarter inch, my quarter inch rounder doohickey thing. So I'm just going to come in and on each side. It's a little weird to do it this way. Normally I would have done this before I installed it, but as it is, it's already installed. So I'm just going to go ahead and do it now. So I think this is where I'm going to stop part two. Um, hopefully I can get the rest done in part three, maybe have to go to a part four, but we'll see. So I really appreciate you joining me today. If you're not a subscriber, I really would appreciate if you hit that subscribe button. Also hitting the notification bell will give you a notification depending on your settings each and every time we post a new video, which I also would appreciate if you have found this video useful, helpful, enjoyable to any extent. If you can give me a big old thumbs up, that would also be greatly appreciated. Hopefully you've had a fabulous time. I know I have, and hopefully you continue to have a fabulous day. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you next time. Bye.